Hello everybody, are you all well today? I am so glad to hear that. And me? Oh yes, still doing very well, thank you. And I am enjoying the late summer weather. Not bad, not too hot, not very cold either. Cool in the mornings, but a little bit of sunshine makes for a lovely day. So where are we going to go to today, you may ask? Right. Well, I got a message from a YouTuber who uses the interesting name of Agent M and then with a UA at the end of it. So Agent M. And UA, by the way, is the internet country code for the Ukraine. <laughs> so Agent M, we're going to do your flight today. And it is between Shannon, that's E-I-N-N, -N, and Stansted, which is E-G-S-S. -S. It's a lovely little flight between you know, on the west coast of Ireland to Shannon, with, uh, to uh, Stansted, which of course is one of the London serving airports. And it's a very busy airport at Stansted too. I did a little bit of history checking up on uh, Shannon because Shannon is a very important airport. It's got a very interesting history. Back in 1945, Shannon was the first port for a transatlantic flight from New York. And it was a DC-4. And that's a four engine and they're powered by four Pratt & Whitney radial engines, 14 cylinders on each of those engines and flying at about 280 knots, about that. But they were not pressurized. And they flew at a, about a 14,000 feet was their usual altitude that they would fly, carrying 52 passengers. The American Overseas Airways were the ones who made that flight and uh, landed in Shannon. Beautiful, wonderful reception by the Irish government and everything else. So it was the site of the first transatlantic landing for a commercial airliner. Since then, we've had all sorts of airliners flying in and out of Shannon. United, Pan Am, American Airlines, lots of others too flew in and out. And Shannon is known for something else as well. You'll never guess this. Are you ready? Shannon, <laughs> they, they started and they were the very first duty-free airport. Did, <laughs> did you know that? Duty-free. They had a little shop on the inside of the airport there that sold all kinds of duty-free goods including booze, a little bit of Irish whiskey, you know. And, uh, and it was such a success that now every international airport in the world has a duty-free section in it. But it all started right there in Shannon. Well, today we are going to be following a route by Ryanair. Now, Ryanair flies that route between Shannon and Stansted every day going back and forth. And it is 
Flight 92, Ryanair Flight 92. And if you want to look it up, it's FR92 in Flight Aware. Now, I've got some interesting airport scenery for both of these places. Now, I couldn't find any commercial scenery for Shannon, but there was some very good freeware scenery, which I managed to find and download. And so Shannon E-I-N-N -N Airport Scenery is freeware with thanks to the designers, two of them, Chris Close and Robert Byrne. OK, Chris, Robert, thank you very much for the excellent design that you did on that airport scenery. Stansted EGSS -S Airport Scenery is made by Gary at UK 2000. Wonderful scenery there and very detailed too, as you will see. OK, then, if you're ready, are you ready, Agent M? <laughs> All right, then let's go into pre-flight and make ourselves a, a plan, shall we? Right, here we are in Flight Aware and we're looking at Ryanair Flight 92 here, right here. Here's the other designators, RYR92 and FR92. Either one of these will bring this up. This particular one arrived at Stansted two hours, two minutes ago, it says at gate 55. We'll try to do the same if we can. It took off from Shannon. It does not say which uh, stand it was at. So we'll, we'll find ourselves a stand when we get there. And it took off on time and it arrived 11 minutes early. Wow. Here's the route. Here you can see in this particular case, it looked like it took off in that direction. And then it took the southern route and then did a bit of a googly to get into Stansted. I'm surprised that they didn't do a straight in, but you know, Stansted is a very busy airport. So it may well have been a sort of a, a stack rack and pack and bring them in as they could because if it is busy it's certainly not you're not going to get straight in landings if you are in the middle of a lot of other aircraft taxi time at shannon was seven minutes and taxi time was five minutes at stansted Looking at the route, it looks like they were flying at 35,000 feet, so we will do the same. Okay, let's go into Windy. Here's the current weather as of 14 minutes ago. And it looks like the wind is coming in from this direction here. And it says it's from 330 degrees. It is eight knots. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Few clouds at 2,000 feet scattered at 4,400. The temperature is a, an interesting five, 15 degrees. Q and H 1022. It's a little in the high pressure area. And there's not any significant change planned on this. And it's VFR. Looking at the runway, well, this is the runway that is in use. And well, no matter how you look at it, whether we take off from runway four or from runway two four, because apparently they are using both, it's crosswind. So we're going to be to having a takeoff, crosswind takeoff. Wow. At our destination, seven minutes ago, it looks like the wind is a little bit more gentle and coming from the northern area but look, by the looks of this. Here you can see the main metropolis of London here and right here is where Stansted is located. It's had some interesting 
weather though in the past little while. It was IFR two hours ago, then went down to minimum VFR, and then it's been VFR since. So it's reporting wind variable two knots. So fairly calm conditions, visibility 10 kilometers or more, no cloud. Temperature is 18 degrees and Q&H 1020, which goes along with the general pressure over England at the minute, which is why it is a very pleasant sunny day out there. Looking at the runways, here is runway 22 right here and here's runway 4. So it's my guess that we'd be coming in on runway 4 just like the previous ones. All right, let's go into sim brief. We are, of course, Ryanair. We are going to be still 186 and not 92. We're going to follow 92, but we're still going to have the call sign of 186. That's because ATC are in absolute dread of Ryanair 186, and they always give us what we want. <laughs> Anyway, we are departing from EINN and we're going to go to EGSS. And there is, oh, Amsterdam is the alternate. That's an interesting one. Airframe Ryanair 186 is a 737 800. Cruise profile is six. There's our registration. The scheduled flight time is 1 hour 30. Departure, they're calling for runway 24 and arrival on 04. We will go and put in here 350 for our altitude like the others. Passengers, well, we are four and we are still carrying, wait for it, yes, caviar and champagne. All complimentary, of course. And there is the route that it's come up with. And it says it's 403 nautical miles. And here we go. This is the route. And it's following pretty much the same as the previous flight. And here you can see it went up, came down. So it's a very interesting arrival there. Oh, well. We'll have to see what we get. We may get a straight in. We may have to do the googly just like Ryanair 92 did. All right, we will save this flight and then we'll generate the flight plan. Well, here's what's been returned. We have everything in here, still the same alternate. There's our cruise altitude. Airtime is one hour and nine minutes. There's the block fuel that we're going to need to make sure we have on board. And here is our route. No remarks in the dispatcher. Looking down here at this, we are Ryanair 186. And right here, the F350, that is our flight cruise altitude. And there is our route. This is our alternate. And there is the information regarding the alternate airport. We'll need to know that we're cost index six. We'll need to know our average wind and speed. The block fuel right there. Reserves. 2,979 kilograms, pretty much 3,000. That will turn out to be three metric tons. Trip and taxi, 3,313 kilograms of fuel required for that. No tankering recommended, so fuel prices are comparable. This is the route and I'll post this in the description box directly below. Here is the wind information. Looking at 
flight level 350 as you can see along here we've got the wind speed and direction and temperature minus 51 it's going to be on that one and here it's minus 52 so that's at our cruising altitude it's going to be a little chilly outside but then again we can always open up a window stick out the champagne glasses and cool them off very quickly don't you think <laughs> oh. anyway we are going to need to know these three figures here uh, for flight level 200 this 20,000 feet when we descend and for flight level 150 and there we are for 10,000 feet as well and here's the winds aloft for our route and for a change it looks like we are going to get some tailwinds which is <laughs> always good news and then coming in to land that way this is for flight level 340 will be 1000 feet above that but it'll be pretty much this all the way and then here is our vertical profile starting out from Shannon all the way up to the top of climb and then top of descent and all the way into Stansted this particular line is the tropopause and we're not going to be high enough to uh, be impacted at all by that but you can see that here we've got tailwinds at varying speeds at all the different altitudes so we're going to have pretty good tailwinds at this particular cruising altitude right there all right let's go into navigraph charts well here we are showing the area of the United Kingdom and Ireland over here so we'll bring in flights new flight from sim brief and use the latest one and there it is there is the route going all the way across clicking on this opening up the charts list we're going to need to know the parking stands and coordinates we'll pin that and the takeoff information there looking at that here you can see we've got a long runway they did build a very long runway to accommodate all of that transatlantic traffic beautifully laid out airport there and for parking stands we are going to be if I can get it right here at stand 28 right at the edge of the terminal building it's saying that we're going to be using the Abago 3 Bravo departure so I'll make sure I pin that as well going over to our destination opening up the charts we're going to need the airport information so I'll pin that and we'll need to know the parking stands it'll be useful for when we get in there if we're coming in on runway four then we'll be using this one the category three for runway four arrival let's have a look at that so this is apparently the route that they want us to take come around and then go around and then come in to land on that okay well unless we can get a straight in landing I don't know if we can but they're looking at this this is the arrival chart if we can get it straight in it would make a lot more sense we'll just have to see what they give us but we'll pin that also right we've got the information that we need so 
All the charts are laid out, everything is prepared. So let's go on into the cockpit and get ourselves ready. Hello there, Agent M. Do come on board, please, and take your seat. Remember now, you've got to buckle up. So, let me tell you where we are. Here it is, we are at Shannon International Airport on the west coast of Ireland. And we are at stand 28. 28 is our stand right here at the airport. I'm going to show you what this looks like. Right, I'm looking over here now to the left. And you can see buildings, vehicles. I hope none of them are kamikazes, but look at the detail there as you look right through the glass. You can see all the way through to the other side. And there's the concourse right there. Amazing detail. And over there is the main front, the uh, Shannon Airport sign. And then over there to the right is the remainder of the apron. And there's a tower over in that section. Isn't this amazing? And this, of course, is freeware. Freeware. And it's courtesy of Chris Close and Robert Byrne who put this together. The amazing, amazing detail. For freeware, this is really quite remarkable. And of course, this is the site of the first transatlantic flight that came in in 1945. Wow. And that was a DC-4. That's a four-engine aeroplane. And it flew all the way across the Atlantic at 14,000 feet. It, because they weren't pressurized in those days. We, on the other hand, are going to be flying a short hop from Shannon over the Irish Sea, over Wales, and then into Stansted. Uh, much shorter distance, but we are going to be at a cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. What a difference. What a difference. Right. Okay. I've got the fuel on, everything is loaded on, i cleaned all the windows. The weather reported in Stansted is clear, so we're going into actually some better weather than we're leaving here, but a lot of this cloud is sweeping in, of course, from the Atlantic, and it's, uh, I'm just quite... Uh, you know, chuffed at this uh, wonderful scenery here. All right, here's what we do then to get ourselves started. I turn on the battery, make sure we have enough voltage, turn on the fuel pumps, and then let's get the APU started. The APU, of course, is located in the tail of the aircraft, and it is going to generate electricity for us as soon as it gets going. And it's also a compressor. And all of that comes from the engine in that tail. And we only need it, of course, for on the ground or in an emergency situation. Over here, the engine gas temperature is rising now. And in a moment, it will dip down. And once it stabilizes, I'm going to look for this light to come on. And when this lights up, this particular one, then it tells me that I've got voltage. There it is. I am now switched to the generator coming in off the engine in the tail. And it says I have 115 volts. So, Turn on the IRS for our GPS system. Turn on the galley. Turn on the emergency exit lights. 
no smoking, fasten seat belts. Over here, I'm going to put on the left and the right window heats. We'll leave the probes for a moment. I'm going to turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps. And over here, the forward service hatch and the equipment air stairs are down. And the passengers are already getting lined up to climb those stairs and come on the inside. So over here, I put on the APU bleed, turn on the packs, and listen. There's that air conditioning going through all of those channels, cooling everything down in the cabin. Because it is a pleasant day out here today, but inside the aircraft, when the sun is beating on it, it's warmer inside than it is outside today. Okay, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the steady light so that the ground crew knows that we're in here and we are preparing. Right, let's go ahead then and program the FMC. First thing we need to do is to check the air rack and make sure that it's in date and that the program is not returning any errors. We go position initialization and our starting point is EINN and we are at stand 28, so 28 right there and then it comes up with that information. Now I'm going to go and check that, make sure that it is correct and it says it should be 52.41.6 and 8. 55 and 1 and look at that it is exactly correct so I'm going to put that there into the temporary then push that now the GPS is set up for our starting point in our system so now I'm going to go to the root start that with E I N N and we're going to go to E G SS for Stansted. We're going to be Ryanair RYR 186 and put that in there. Go to the next page and then looking at our flight plan, the routing, our first waypoint is Abagu. So A B A G U. is the first waypoint. Then we go direct to Slany, S-L-A-N-Y, S-L-A-N-Y. And then we take the UL9, so UL number nine is the route, and that takes us to S-T-U, S-T and U. Then we take the popper 2 route, so popper 2, and that will take us to BEDEK, B-E-D-E-K. And that is our route. I activate that, execute. Now I'm going to go into fix and put the circles around our destinations so that we will see them on the screens here. So destination is EGSS for Stansted. We need a four mile circle. We need a 10 mile circle and we need a 30 mile circle. Go to descent, go to forecast. Now Transition level is set by ATC, but nominally it's about 6,000 feet, so I'm going to leave that as it is. But we do need to put in the information for these three flight levels of 200, 150, and 100. Q and H at our destination is 1020, so 1020. At 200, it is 
247 at 29. So 247 at 29. At flight level 150, it is 242 at 17. 242 at 17. And at 10,000 feet, it is 250.11. 250 and 11. And then we execute that. Go to departures and arrivals. Go to departure. And now we need to listen in to ATIS to see what the information is about the airport. And the ATIS is 130.95. So 13095. Shannon Airport Information India 1047 Zulu Wind 333 at 10 Visibility greater than 20 miles Sky condition 3200 scattered 4000 scattered Temperature 17 Dew point Altimeter 61021 Landing and departing one way. Six VFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have. India. Well, we have India. So, according to this. Runway 6 is in use, uh, landing and departing, or report direction of flight. So we'll have to see now what our clearance is. So let's go ahead and tune in and get our clearance, our IFR clearance for departure on runway 6. So the clearance delivery is at 121.7. So one to one point seven. Clearance delivery, Ryanair one eight six ready to copy IFR clearance to Stansted. Ryanair one eight six is clear to Bravo Echo Delta Echo Kilo Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain seven thousand departure frequency of one two zero point two squawk six four six six. Ryanair 186 cleared to Bravo Echo Delta Echo Kilo Airport as filed fly runway heading climb and maintain 7000 departure on 120.2 squawk 6466 Ryanair 186 read back correct contact ground on 121.8 All right we have our clearance and now we are ready to put in the rest of the information. We're going to be departing on runway 6 and we'll be using the, so the, the 3 Alpha then. Okay, now we go to uh, departures and arrivals and we are, it is being proposed that we're coming in on runway ILS 4 and we'll be using the the BEDEC 1 Lima arrival so the BEDEC 1 Lima arrival and the transition is going to be Laurel right I'm going to now request the taxi clearance to see what they give us Shannon Ground Ryanair 186 with India ready to taxi IFR Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 6 via taxiway Alpha runway 6 contact tower on 118.7 when ready. Taxiing hold short runway 6 using taxiway Alpha runway 6 Ryanair 186. Well we are cleared to go to runway 6 and hold short at the runway there so. Right let's check this route and I'm going to turn to plan and now you can see we have our departure and on here it says runway 24 that's because we have to backtrack a little on runway 24 so we'll go through each of the steps there it is and there's Abagu, there's Slani, there's STU and going through all of these waypoints and there we go now there's Ockham that's when we start to go north there's Baton there's BPK and there's the going up and this is where we make the turn come down to Laurel and then the Laurel will take us down intercept the final right here 
at CF04. So, it is a good route, it's good all the way through. Right, I'm going to go back to map, and now I'm going to set my distance to 20, and I'm going to put weather on here, double click for data, I'm going to put terrain on your side, double click data, now I'm going to turn on the TCAS so that we can be seen by other aircraft, and everything is looking good so far, local barometric pressure is 1021, put that on, I'm now going to put the decision height of 50 into the settings right there. I'm going to go VOR1 and VOR2, VOR1 and VOR2. Up here I'm going to turn on the yaw damper and the light went out. Turn on the RTO and now we'll complete the the flight plan. Shannon, ground, Pacifica 2360, with Juliet, ready to... I'll just shut that down so that we don't get disturbed. Going to perform the initialization. Now, block fuel, as you know, is 6,956. Reserves are 2,979, which is about 3.0. The trip and taxi is 3,313, that comes to 6,292 or 6.3, so 6.3, put that into the plan, reserves is 3, cost index of course is 6, cruising altitude is 350, average wind is 270 at 29, 270 at Nine. Transition altitude is correct. Double click on the zero fuel weight and then it calculates everything out for us. Execute that. Go to N1 limit. We'll take the 17 degrees and leave it at that. We're not going to do any of the D rates or the bumps in this particular flight. We'll use flaps 10 for departure double click this and it gives us the center of gravity and the trim wheel value. One click on this gives us for the V1, there's the rotation speed and 146 is V2 or liftoff. So I'm going to put 146 into this and because the we're departing now on runway 6, and that is 56 degrees is our course heading. So go to 56, go to 56 on this one. And I'll do yours too if that's alright Agent 10. And 56 on there. I'll get our cruise altitude set in, in anticipation of course. Now I'm going to set the pressurization, so that is 35,000 feet and that goes in up here, 35,000. The airport elevation at our destination is 348, so that's close enough to 350 for the landing altitude there. All right, we're looking good. Everything seems fine, good. Now I'm going to turn the flight director on here, flight director on there, VNAV button, LNAV button, and I've got green lights on both. So arm the throttle, and now everything is set up on the MCP. Everybody's on board, so we'll bring up the stairs and close the hatch that sound that you hear that's the electric motor 
bringing up the stairs, it folds them up so very nicely and tidily and then stows it in a compartment directly underneath the forward hatch. Okay, now since we have to go to runway 6 and not 24 which is what we thought, we need to have our nose go to the right and our tail go to the left because we have to go out in that direction in order to get to the active runway, runway 6. Now which engine would you like to start? number one and number two it's your choice either one left or the right you want to start the left one first we can do that so engine number one will be the start one right before we do that let's do the check fuel is good windows locked seat belt signs are on check door lights are out check mcp program is check take off thrust bugs and all done, CDU pre-flight is complete, rudder aerolon trim is free and clear, taxi takeoff briefing, we've just done that, anti-collision light is now going on. So, now that we're going to start engine number one first, you say, so let's ask the people to give us a pushback so we can start. Cockpit to ground. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Parking brake's off. Parking brake is off. All right. Brakes released. Now I'm going to turn off the air conditioning because we need that to start the engine spin. I'm going to turn this to generator one. Brakes released, here we go. And now I'm going to start the engine. So we're now starting the engine. The start valve has opened. There you can see the N2 is spinning up. This is the engine spinning here, you can see. When that gets to 24, then I'll introduce the fuel. And it's getting close there. There we go. 24 and now bringing in the fuel I'm now looking for the engine gas temperature to rise oh and look at that look at that it really is looking now for the low oil pressure light to go out it has and we should be here able to hear the engines in just a moment there they go we have an ignition I'm now looking for 115 volts up there. We have 115 volts, switching to engine number two and starting number two. The start valve has opened. The N2 is spinning up. Push back complete, parking brake please. Parking brake is set. And when this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. Brake set. There is the fuel going in. I'm now looking for the gas. Oh, the engine gas temperature is rising beautifully. And over here, I'm now looking for right, the low oil pressure light to go on. Thank you, gentlemen. Such nice people here on the ground, aren't they? This is coming up very nicely. Now I'm looking for 115 volts up here. And there it is, we have 115 volts. As soon as this tick mark has gone out here, good, it has. Now that both engines are stabilized, I'm now going to switch to the generators from both engines. I'm going to go over here, I'm going to turn on the packs again so that the air conditioning is running. Turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. All right, they're all clear down below, so I'm going to turn on the three taxi lights. And we are, let's do our after start check. So generators are on, probe heat is now going on. 
anti-ice not required. Isolation valves are good. Start levers idle detent. Flight deck door is closed and locked. Recall is checked. Flight controls check flaps. I'm going to go to flaps 10. Oh, there are kamikazes. Look at that, they're all ready. We've got this bullseye on us somewhere. There's a bullseye. Oh well. And we have green lights on the flaps. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake is RTO. Speed brake lever down in detent. Ground equipment is clear. So now I'm going to verify the takeoff speeds. Make one small adjustment there and now we are set to go. So we have to go down there and then out in that direction, get to the runway, backtrack and then take off. I've got the Navigraph charts now activated and you can see it down to the right here and you can see where our location is and where we have to go to get to the active runway. Now this is a long runway and we could do a departure from that intersection. What do you think? Do you want to try that? I mean all we can do is but try it, right? Okay, let's see how it works out then. But this is remarkably good scenery. Look at all of this. I'm going to take a quick video so you can see what the airport looks like. And ah, and there's a kamikaze heading right for it. Oh no, perhaps not. There's a C-130 parked over there. Remarkable detail for freeware scenery. Well done boys, well done indeed. Wonderful job. Oh, and there's that kamikaze. Go on, hop it. I call that loitering with intent. <laughs> break off, apply a little power to get ourselves unstuck, alright we're now moving, here we go, the vehicle is out of the way so we should be alright, takeoff though. That windsock is definitely crosswind. As soon as we get close to 
to the runway will contact the tower and ask for clearance to take off. How does that sound? You know they've got the detail and the buildings exactly matched to the real chart plates here. Really detailed. Now according to regulations Commercial aircraft carrying passengers should use the full runway. But, since we are Ryanair 186 and we tend to do things our way, we may, I think we can just go ahead and uh, make a departure from here. So let's see, let's get our clearance. Shannon Tower, Ryanair 186, ready for IFR. Departure runway 6. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff runway 6. Cleared for takeoff runway 6, Ryanair 186. Right, we are cleared for takeoff, so takeoff briefing is done. Engine please are on and engine start switches are on. Cabin is secure. Now switching to position steady, strobe. Clock is running. All lights are on. Attendants, we are departing. All right, we'll move into position and take off. Make sure everything is clear. should have more than enough runway. Okay, let's advance the power to N1. And power is stable, push the toga button, full power. And we are rolling. Yeah, I can feel the wind blowing us.
up the clouds. Alright, I'm now going to turn off the seatbelt signs because we are now on our way and guess what? It's time for, let me think, let me think, don't, don't, it'll come to me. Oh, of course, champagne and caviar. How could I forget? So Agent Tem, go down and mingle with the customers and find out whatever they like about the champagne and the caviar and have a lot yourself. And as soon as we are on our descent and approach into Stansted, I'll give you a shout, okay? See you in a little bit.
that we are descending very nicely we need to we're on course but there's a lot of aircraft in the area so we are going to have to keep watch in fact I think that is the Stansted over there so we go up here do a googly come out go around and then come in from the other end that's the way they want it we're coming up on Barkway in just a moment and when we cross over that needle right now we're four DME miles from Barkway when we cross over that needle that's up here will swing and point back and then we will be going back swinging around and going back to Barkway and then making and then entering the downwind portion
are 6,280 feet, so we're doing all right.
turning onto base leg. Pacifica 172. 
two, clear to land, runway two, two, follow the Boeing 737 on the runway, Ryanair 186, exit runway when able, Ryanair 186, contact ground on 121.725. 121.725. area 
and there's FedEx over there. Big hub for FedEx here. So I'm going to go all the way up until I get to the Charlie intersection and then turn in to find ourselves a place to park. The one that we looked at this morning came in to stand 5-5, 55, so if it's available we'll go for the same. of detail in this, don't you think? Look at all of that. A lot of detail. There's a lot of aircraft here. Frame rate is holding good at 15, 16. Not bad, especially when I have 4K, three 4K monitors. And when it came to the selection of things to add and whatnot for this particular scenery, I tick marked every box. This I think is the Alpha. I can see a Ryanair parked over there, and two, I can see several, okay, so that's the Delta wing right there, that's the Delta. Let's just hope that we can avoid the kamikazes. One aircraft that's moving across. I hope that that's not going to try to interfere with us. There's Thomas Cook, there's Easy Jets, there's a lot of liveries here. where he's going. Oh good, he's turning off. Right, we'll continue. this one because we want to try to park over there somewhere. Alright, stick your hand out so that we can turn right. Ha, okay. And this is the Charlie turn off.
may not get 55, we may have to settle for another one. There goes the kamikaze, go on, buzz off. We'll turn into this one. One looks empty. This is 53 left. And coming up. Engines of shutdown. All right, lights off. All right, your damper off. IRS off. Galley off. Seat belt signs are off. Window heat is off. Probes are off. Hydraulic pumps are off. Okay, all the lights are negative on that. Good. And... Okay, and then pumps off. APU off. Battery off. And shutdown is complete. Well, Agent M, we made it. What do you think? Here we are in Stansted. You can see all of the Ryanair livery to all around us. So we are at the place where they all come in to land and dock. 55 was taken. So we are at 53, 53 Lima. And that's not bad. Everything is beautifully detailed here. And as I say, 15, 16 is the frame rate. Not particularly brilliant, but then again, I have pulled out all the stops, ticked all the boxes, so I've maxed everything. And it comes out pretty good. Well, I hope you enjoyed the flight. I hope it lived up to your expectations. The weather here is really nice. It's a lovely late summer day today. Just perfect. I hope you enjoy your stay in England. And I'll see you on the next flight and everyone else, I'll see you on the next flight of Ryanair 186. Bye everybody.